This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and use this free cash flow technique that we've just gone through and looked at to be able to work out the value of equity. Okay, so we're going to start doing some discounting of either free cash flows or discounting of free cash flow to equity to ensure that we can calculate the correct value of equity usually uh, the total value of equity or the value per share okay uh, so let's go through and have a look at the first example that we have on free cash flow valuation uh, it wants us to work out the value of a sigma share now just be careful that it's not saying work out the value of equity it's working out the value of a share so to work out the value of the share you need the value of equity in total but then we'll need to divide it by the number of shares in issue okay uh, so we're looking at share price okay. uh, so it says sigma has free cash flow to equity now i think that's really important isn't it that's the figure that you're giving not free cash flows but free cash flow to equity the cash flows that are attributable to the shareholders only okay so after the deduction of any interest okay that the debt holders have got their cash what's left for you or i the equity shareholders and here we're told that we have 6.5 million okay given that we have the free cash flow to equity we are going to have to go through there and do some discounting to get to present value my question to you is if we're given the free cash flow to equity what discount rate do we use to discount back to present value? Is it the WAC or is it the cost of equity? Hands up if you think it's the WAC. One or two. No, 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 no. Hands up if you think it is the cost of equity. Many more hands. Brilliant. Okay. If you've got the free cash flow to equity, you will need to discount those free cash flow to equity by the return required by the equity holders, which is the cost of equity. Okay. So those free cash flow to equity of $6.5 million uh, are going to be discounted at the 8%. Okay. Uh, we're told that those cash flows uh, are going to grow at 2% per annum. So although they're growing indefinitely to infinity, uh, it is a perpetuity, but it is an inflating perpetuity, isn't it? So we need to incorporate the growth into our calculations. Uh, we're told the capital structure there, in terms of our equity, there is $5 million worth of equity in the books be very careful I haven't made it tricky here but here they are one dollar shares okay that's the par value so there are five million equity shares in issue okay so what have we got well what we're going to go through and do is to work out the present value we're going to take your free cash flows to equity and multiply by a discount factor from 1 to infinity at 8%, but whereby your growth is equal to 2%. Okay, so remember, you need your free cash flow to equity in a year's time, don't we? So it's the future cash flows. Uh, if the cash flows are there today, is it at 6.5 million? Okay, we need to look at what they will be in a year's time, don't we? Okay, uh, because that's how the discount factor formula works. In terms of the formula, remember that is 1 over KE minus G, isn't it? And then your free cash flow to equity in a year's time. Take your free cash flows to equity today and multiply by one plus the growth rate isn't it okay we're not given the free cash flow to equity in a year we're told what the free cash flows are today okay uh, so here what we're going to have uh you've got is it your 6.5 million multiplied by one plus my growth rate of 0 0.02 divided by the cost of equity of 0 0.8 less the growth rate 
of 0 0.2 okay tap it onto your calculator ladies and gents and what do you get you get 110.5 million dollars that is the value of the equity to work out the value per share it's the 110.5 divided by the 5 million shares that were in issue uh, does that go through there and work out as 22.1 dollars per share okay there we go okay excellent hopefully you're all happy with that one there okay any questions throw them on the ask the tutor forum okay uh, much easier for me to go through that and access and answer any questions that you may have okay uh, there will be some questions in the study text if you chosen tuition provider that are similar to that uh, work them through okay have a go at those uh, in the actual study text don't do any of the revision kit questions just yet okay work the examples in, in the class notes that you've got from wherever it may be and and see how you get on then move on to the more challenging aspects okay uh, if we go through then and look at the free cash flow to valuation as our second example a little bit more complicated cranking it up ever so slightly okay uh, so what have we got uh, same scenario okay uh, we need to work out the equity value uh, I think it says Sigma there I think the question actually refers to Omega okay uh, I will update it to make sure that it is correct uh, so it says Omega in both parts but who cares okay we want the equity value we're not looking at the value per share we're looking at the equity value in total assuming that the shareholders expected return is eight percent as it is the shareholders expected return that must be ke mustn't it okay the cost of equity so when we're discounting any cash flows they need to be the free cash flow to equity and lucky for us we are given the free cash flow to equity aren't we okay uh, we're told what they are for years one two and three so we can discount those back to present value uh, the cash flows at year three are expected to grow at two percent indefinitely for the foreseeable future so again we have an inflating perpetuity inflating at two percent okay this is going to be a challenge so let's go uh, what have we got uh, well I'd actually lay it out just like a, a pro forma MPV calculation uh, using your columns so we've got the is it T1 T2 T3 okay uh, we've got our free cash flows to equity is it is 340 410 and 450 okay uh, forget about the fact for the time being that they are going to go through that and inflate is it the to infinity okay uh, and that is going to be there is it at the two percent okay uh, so what we're going to go through and do there is we need our discount factors is it there eight percent okay so is that the 0.926 is that 0.857 is that the 0.794 okay uh, to work out the present value it's obviously your cash flow to equity if you want to be particular multiplied by your discount factor so 340 times by 0.926 is that the oh careful my handwriting has gone awful all of a sudden 314.8 uh, is it then 410 times by 0 0.857 is that 
450 times by 0 0.794 is that 357.3. Okay. Uh, we can work out the, the, the total present value there. However, we have ignored the fact that these cash flows are inflating. Is it there to perpetuity? Okay. Uh, so what we can do, okay, is we can go through that and work out if you like uh the the terminal value sometimes people refer to it as okay uh, so what is the value at t3 of, of all of these future cash flows so what we have here okay is to work it out uh is again you're going to take your cash flow in a year's time so effectively that will be in t4 so what we can do there is we can just do a, a separate little working Oh, careful. That's the next section. Uh, because what we've got there is the cash flows are 450. They are going to inflate, is it, by 2%. And then we can divide that, is it, by the 0 0.08 minus the 0 0.02. Okay, so effectively what we're doing here, so that you can appreciate where it all comes from, it's the free cash flow to equity at T4 uh, divided by KE minus G. Okay, so remember we're always looking at the, the cash flows in a year's time. So if we're working out the, the terminal value at T3, we need to look at the cash flows in T4. Okay, hence we've taken the, the 450 and multiplied it by 1.02. Okay, if you tap that onto your calculator. I think that gives us, is it the 7650? Okay, so what we've got there is the terminal value is 7650. Uh, to go through that and work out its present value. Uh, what we need to go through and do there is we need to multiply by 0 0.794. That gives me there. Is it 6074.1? Okay. There we go. Uh, let's just double check that we have our numbers correct. 450 times by 1.02 uh, divided by uh, 7650. And multiplied by 0.794 gives me 6074.1. Okay, any numerical differences are likely to be in terms of rounding. And then to work out the total present value, uh, we need to go through there, don't we? And add all of those together. Okay, so the total present value, uh, which is the value of Omega's equity. 6074.1 plus 314.8 plus 351.4 plus 357.3 gives me that is it 7097.6 okay uh, again in the question that was the in thousands of dollars so to you or I that is 7.1 million dollars okay there we go that's the total equity value to work out the value per share you need to be given the number of shares an issue which we aren't in this instance uh, but that could be a further complication within the question okay i've given you the theory i've done a couple of examples it's up to you now to go through there and play around with all of the questions not just within the study text but within the revision kits as well it's computation. The more you do it, the better you get. And the better you get, the quicker you'll be able to work it through. As you work the questions, there'll be some questions that trip you up. You need to learn from whereby you have made that mistake so that when it comes to later questions and the actual exam itself, you don't make the same mistake again. Okay, so work a question. Don't be afraid to go through there and work it again. Okay, other than that, I'll see you within the next little session when we begin to go through there and looking at valuing our debt.